right, so I'm going to show you how I make these, uh, these, these planters for my fig trees according to the method I posted about. <clears throat> First, uh, for the bottom cup, you want to perforate this with uh, ventilation holes. This isn't so much for drainage as it is for oxygen. So on the bottom, you've got standard 18 ounce uh, cup here, standard 18 ounce uh, solo cup. I used solo. And I'm going to put 12 holes around the, the side, and I'm going to put four holes in the bottom with a hot uh, soldering iron. And so the way I do it, I like orderliness, so I'm just going to put it right in there. And I'm going to do top and bottom, and sides, you can do it however you want. But these holes kind of serve as my guide now to where I'm going to put the holes on the side. I'm going to put two holes, and I'm going to kind of open them up a little bit. by rotating the soldering iron around a bit. So there you go, you got two holes, about a quarter of an inch, about three-eighths of an inch. Actually, that's probably more close to a quarter of an inch uh, in, in, in diameter. And I'm going to line up again with, with these holes, put two more, move it around in the hole to melt, to open it up a bit. I think this is a one-eighth inch soldering bit, um, so I go double, the, double what this is by moving it around in the hole. So I'll line it up again with this line. And I'll put two more holes there. This is just such an easy method, and it leaves a, a, a nice hole there without any cracks in it. And then finally, I'll put uh, the, the last double row of, line, uh, of holes here, like so. Now, in between each of these rows of, of holes, I'll put another one just kind of in the middle. It's just I think it looks tidy and I like that. So you don't have to do it this way. You could put holes in however pattern you like. I just like the fact that it's orderly and it looks nice. And so I put four holes in there. And so for a total of 12 on the sides, four on the bottom. Now, what we have here is now a perforated cup. This will be the bottom cup into which I will put my growing medium, which is this Miracle Grow uh, potting mix that's also good for rootings. And then I will take another cup, and I've already put a hole in the top there. You can see that it's a, a hole. That's my, humid, uh, my humidity my humidity cap. And I'll put it on top of there. And there you go. You've got yourself a little, a little cutting pod. I'll tape them together. As you can see back here, there's humidity in these guys. And that, that's how I do it. All right, the next thing I do is I put the growing medium in, and you've got to mix this stuff up. So just like the guy said on the forum who I am following his instructions to a T. He had a, a 90 plus percent success rate and he used this miracle Grow seed starting potting mix which is basically sphagnum moss with a little bit of vermiculite or perlite mixed in and of course it's miracle Grow, so it has a, a little bit of plant food in it and it says it's excellent for cuttings. Now I like this stuff I like miracle Grow products. Uh, let me see if I can turn my grow lights off and get better I think maybe you can see a little bit better now. So I'm going to put it in a bucket. I've got some water in here. And I'm going to mix in this water. Now, I use rainwater from my... Uh, I catch rain rainwater off my roof, and I'm going to use that because it doesn't have all the, the additives of our local tap water, chlorine and all kinds of fluoride and all kinds of chemicals in it. I mean, you can just smell that stuff. It smells like a swimming pool. So anyway, now I've mixed this sphagnum moss up. I want to show you what it looks like. This is moist. I don't think you can see it there in the in in the film, but it's moist, about like a wet sponge. So if, it doesn't stick together, but if I squeeze it, I can hear it. I can hear the the gushing of water, and I can feel the water running. That's about where I want. It. I don't want it sopping wet. I just want it like a like a squeezed out sponge, is what they say, and that's all. That's all that uh, that's all that's required. So what I'll do is I'll take one of my cups that has all the holes perforated in it, and I'll fill this up. Let me turn the light on and see if that actually does help. I'm not sure that it does. Ah, well, we'll see. Anyway, I take one of my grow cups, and I just basically fill it up with this moss, and I don't want it packed down dense. But I do want it, you know, in there. I, I want enough of it in there. But I don't want it super dense because I want air circulation. These roots require oxygen. Uh, air circulation, that's what the holes are for. They're not for drainage. They're not for water. They're for air circulation. 
All right, so you'll see I have my uh, everything I need. I have my cuttings. These are uh, fresh cuttings that I have purchased from a fellow fig enthusiast. They are nicely wrapped. These are uh, going to go in today. Now, I'll unwrap these and then we will treat them with a quick clone rooting compound. We will make a hole in there and that will be uh, the, the, that, that's how we plant them. That's how we, that's how we root them. Okay, you can see here I've got my cuttings. These are uh, premium cuttings, I think. They are Ronde de Bordeaux. They are uh, round of Bordeaux. It's a French variety. It's a very desirable variety, so I want these to go in and do right. You can see that they are um, cut flat across. Some people prefer an angled cut. Uh, I've got some dense, uh, I've got some woody stems here, and I have some younger sh stems here, some younger shoots. And you can tell by the way they they look. You can, if you study these fig trees, you can see which way is up um, by by the the fact that the, the the little node is on top of the the. Well, I don't know how to explain this. There's there's a little a little stem node here where there used to be a stem or a leaf or a fruit, and on top of that is the sucker node. That's the node that's going to grow. And so you want to put these in with those nodes facing upward. This is, um, so there's six of these and I'm going to be potting them all and seeing what kind of result we get from these various, uh, these various cuttings. Alright, so I have my cup. I'm going to put some, some of this uh, rooting hormone, this rooting compound, in a little tray here. You don't dip it directly into the compound, you might contaminate it if these things have some kind of disease or fungus. And what I'm going to do is just basically take a pen or a pencil and, and route me a hole in my medium there. I'm going to take my, my uh, cutting, making sure that I have the, the bottom end. Now, these are very clean. These are freshly cut. They were cut in April. These are not dried out, so uh, I don't need to go and, and, and trim anything off of there. Otherwise, I would take my trimmers and I would just give them a slight trim. I'd, I'd cut an angle off of there. I'm going to dip them in this rooting compound. I'm going to drop them in my hole and I'm going to lightly, just lightly tamp it down. And then on top of that would go one of my other, uh, one of my, uh, one of my, my humid, humidifier cups. Now this one's a little tall. I may cut that dude down a bit. But let me see how that's going to fit. We have a cover cup here. Yeah, see that's going to be a little bit too big, so I'm just going to take, I'm just going to take and cut right about there. I'm cut that off right there, and then I will tape this together. I will drop it into a black cup, and we're done. That's how I'm going to be potting these these cuttings and hoping they will take root. And I will keep you up to date of my successes or my failures. Thanks for watching.